It's my understanding. You're confused about this whole T crossing, whatever, Japanese, Russian thing, strategy that Dustin was talking about. And you need clarification on why this is important in history. So um, we're going to work on that. And here's Dustin. Hold on. Dustin. Hey, people. Hi. And this is Loki. Yeah. Loki, say hello. Yeah. Hello to the Dustin. three, maybe four friends that actually yeah. watched this damn show. Exactly. So, okay, uh, Dustin. Yeah. So there was this thing that we talked about in the last video about, help me out. I, I get T section confused yeah. with C section. Well, we were talking about what? Alfred Thayer Mayhans and Naval Book and its influence upon uh, history. And here's my booze. Okay. Uh, and how Japanese actually embraced the ideas of modern warfare and Americanism yeah. around the turn of the century. Yeah, and why is this important to us, and what what strategic play did this have in naval warfare? Well, in the overall thing, this is one of the most classic examples. Uh, around 1904, 1905, not quite the certain date. Uh, you know, prior to this time, Russia, on paper, was like a big fucking motherfucking badass country. It's a large country. It's got a lot of soldiers. Uh, this is post Crimean War, which is an entire other fuck up we don't have time to get into right now. Okay. Uh, but you're hearing this thing where the world is transitioning from the type of warfare that was dominant in the pre 19th century up until basically the Civil War. You start to see the breakdowns. Okay. And this warfare no longer is going to work. And then you had the Crimean War, and then you got to the Russo Japanese War, which leads up into. The World War One, okay, where tactics have and technology has developed to a point where the classical uh, standard of doctrine of warfare has changed. So, why is this important to America? So, we're way on the other side of the world. Thank you, Sansa, mm -hmm. for interjecting uh, your opinion. Um, but we're on the other side, and so these Japanese and Russians are having this fight. Why do we care? Well. Because the Americans were one of the first ones, like I said, I referenced in the previous video, uh, mm -hmm. Alfred Thayer Mahan's book uh, about sea power. Right. was one of the first ones to realize this transition is actually happening. Okay, that the, 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 the uh, strategic advantage of sea, sea power, power was a big deal. Big deal. And the Japanese were the first to figure it out with this, what is it called? T? They were, well, I mean... The freight, the actually, the technology has been around a while, but they were the first one to apply it to mo the modern warfare. Okay. At this time, we're seeing steam, coal powered as opposed. We're seeing the transition from wind power to mechanicalized power, whether it be coal. Okay, so instead of the steam. sail ships, the big tall ships that we yeah we used to see in ancient times, to the coal powered. Coal Steam power, powered mechanical ship. power. Let's just call it yeah. mechanical power because yeah. it goes on. You know, you have coal boilers, you get nuclear reactors. It's all basically the same thing. Yeah, it's all basically the same thing. It's just that you're, you're no longer relying on the, the wind to power your warships. Okay. Uh, at the time, I, Russia had th and Japan got into a conflict over basically who controlled the right, east side of Asia, if you're looking at Russia, west side of Asia, if you're going from the United States westward. But, you know, basically down through Russia, through... China through Korea. Mm -hmm. I don't think Mongolia touches the coast, so it doesn't apply. Yeah, uh, they got to a conflict on who could control that area. Okay, so what happened to cause this T? What is it called? T? It's called crossing the T. Is it crossing the T? Crossing the T. This is a T trick maneuver. Uh, and they Mahan had talked about this in his book. Oh, cheers. Russia had a Baltic Atlantic fleet. Uh, this is back during the time of the Tsars, prior to World War One. Like I said, it's 1904. They had sent their entire naval fleet around Africa and up through to engage the Japanese fleet. Well, the Japanese actually, I don't, I want to call it ambush because I think they kind of knew each other was there. But they picked the battleground well enough that they were able to perform a maneuver. It's, it's standard, I mean, Drake and uh, Nelson... You'll be familiar with this thing. All, all the other naval commanders. Oh, so this is a naval maneuver. A naval that, maneuver. Okay. It's called crossing the T. Now, if you're familiar with the battleships that you see in World War II, up at, which is basically the last great era of the battleships. Right, right, right. It appears that the heavy armaments of a battleship are facing forward. And yeah. you would think, and you're in, 
your intrinsic value is saying, well, if you want to, Sansa, please back up. Uh, Sansa, you don't need to interject in this yeah. conversation. When you're thinking about this, uh, you would think if you want to fight another ship, right. you want to give them the smallest profile as possible, and this is where it seems counterintuitive. Right. But back in this day, based upon ship designs, limited technology, you would still have the main guns facing forward, but you have a shit ton of side guns along the side of the... the okay, so the old pirate ships with the guns on the side of them... It was kind of an improvisation of that. Well, it's just basically where you can put them. Where can you put them? Okay. All right. All where right. Where can you put the most guns? Where do you have the most room and uh, technology? And, you know, say so that these were prior, quite generation prior to Dreadnoughts, but almost there. Uh, so Japan was able to actually get the Russians to come up through a series of islands. And this, this is like the golden orgasm of naval warfare, if you can do this to your enemy. It's called crossing the sea. That's where you have all your enemies' lines, enemy ships that you're facing. Going looking, sideways. Going straight forward. Gotcha. And because you, all their armaments are facing forward, too. All they're facing forward, so they cannot use any of their side armaments. Is where you okay. look like your, your broadsides. Gotcha. Like, as opposed to the classic days when that was all there was for war was broadsides. Okay. You pull up next to somebody and you just fire... Side to side hey, each other. is this equivalent to the Russell Crowe movie? What was it called uh, with the pirates? Uh, not pirates. Uh, uh, Master and Commander? Master and Commander. That is was it? a good movie. Yeah, it was. I know so you know, it, yeah. it, was Crossing the T applied in Master and Commander? You know, it's been a while since I've seen that movie. I, yeah, think, I think it was. Yeah, I, think they, they, I think it was demonstrated. So yeah. you're exactly right. So the Japanese applied this against the Russians and was triumphant? Yeah, they, they, were tri they destroyed the Russian fleet. And okay. All, and this basically led to the Russian, the, by the time World War I, this destroyed the Russian Navy. So by the time they got World War I, they had no naval power that was to gotcha. be significance. And um, so this was strategic for America because they realized, okay, Navy is a good thing to have and using the crossing the T philosophy or strategy is a good application. I mean, it's kind of weird because this was basically, uh, America did not get that many sea battles in World War mm -hmm. One. I could be wrong, but I don't recall them. Well, it, that was the dawn of the submarine, right? Yeah. I mean, World War One, you saw submarines. Submarines really came into major influence in World War Two. That's when the World War Two. I mean, here's mm -hmm. my thing. World War Two basically made all the previous ideas about naval warfare obsolete because we mm -hmm. introduced air, aircraft carriers. Gotcha. Well, that that was the dawn of air combat. We'll talk about air combat another day. Yeah. All right. We're going to talk. Okay. So my the deal is the importance of this whole Japanese-Russian thing was the Japanese proved that this particular crossing the T strategy was highly effective well, and, I mean what, what, and what? it helped open up trade across the oceans, right? Uh, yes. And what I'm trying to say, the entire point I made. The entire, and I don't want to discredit the Japanese from their own credit, but the Japanese relied heavily upon American influence in Mayhan and the generals they brought over to modernize their army, their navy, their military. Gotcha. So what I'm trying to say is when this battle came and they were able to pull this movie, this move successful off, which is very rare in history right? because everybody knows to stay against it, they were basing upon American influences, American teachings, which shows that American isolationist philosophy, which is what we are talking about in the previous episode, basically what that, that's bullshit. America has mm -hmm. always been involved in the expansion of military power, and American ideas by those that accept them have been successful. Right. And I'm not saying we're infallible. And we, no, no, no. But what I was – the point I was trying to make, and if you take it and continue, it's not, just, it's not just one strategic battle. It's the fact that the ideas, the American – Philosophy had been able to, to absorb this concept, to understand this concept, and to export this concept gotcha. to others. So that okay. wasn't just useful in the short term or one specific battle. But we were take, able to take the Japanese thing from a society that had no naval power, had no understanding of modern warfare, and just in a 
couple of short decades take them to a point where they could defeat a large European power, which is basically the st- who were the pa- the uh, standard bearers at the time. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Cotton, do you feel better about the situation? Fuck you. I think he does. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>